Hey, what's up? Imagine a Cinnabon. You smell that thing and you're like, yes, this is the thing that's finally gonna scratch that itch. And then you eat it and you feel kind of sad and desperate. And oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, you're at the mall when you're eating it. There's a Spencer's right next to you, man. So instead of all that, I'm gonna show you how to make a thoughtful handmade cinnamon roll at home. First things first, to make a pro level cinnamon roll, we need to preheat a small saucepan over medium heat and into that measure, one whole stick of butter or about four ounces and 115 grams of milk. I'm gonna heat that till the butter is melted and the milk is pretty warm. This is all gonna probably reach a simmer though before that butter is fully melted and that's okay. I'm just gonna take it off the heat at this point, let that coast and give that butter a second to fully melt. Next, I'm gonna grab my stand mixer. And if you don't have one of these, that's not a sweat. This dough can be made by hand with a little bit of patience and the rest of the recipe can be made by a handheld egg beater style mixer if you've got one of those. I'm gonna grab our milk and butter. It's kind of hot though. Uh, I think it's probably about 140 degrees at this point. That's too hot to add to a yeasted dough. It's gonna kill the yeast. I'm gonna add in 225 grams of plain yogurt here straight from the fridge and that should cool this mixture down to a reasonable temperature. We're looking for about 100 degrees and there on the laser thermo, you can see that's close enough. Cool. Next, into the bowl of the standy here, we're gonna measure 450 grams of all-purpose flour, 100 grams of sugar, eight grams of salt, one gram of baking soda, and five grams of yeast. Once all that's measured out, we're gonna pour the wet stuff now into the dry stuff and attach the dough hook to the mixer. We're gonna mix this now for a little while. This is gonna take about 10 minutes total in the bowl to come together nicely. I like to start at low speed for about four to five minutes until things get combined. The dough is gonna look a little sticky at first. This is because all of that enrichment in there from the butter, the milk, and the yogurt is gonna impede the gluten and development. Gluten and gluten development, and it takes a while longer to get things bulked up with strength. After that four to five minutes, we're gonna mix for two more minutes on medium speed, and the dough's gonna start to clear the bowl and slap around a little bit. From there, I'm gonna turn things up to high speed and mix for another minute or so. You know the dough's done when it looks like this. It's shiny, it can hold itself together, and when you stretch it out, you can see some light through it. This is called the window pane test, and for enriched doughs like this one, it's a really good litmus test to know when it's done being mixed. Now, I'm gonna scoot the mixer aside, oil a medium stainless steel bowl, and move this dough into that. Now, the dough is a real beauty. Make sure you touch it, you enjoy it, you get in there, just get, yeah. It's nice and strong, look at that. Okay, now I'm gonna wrap this thing with plastic wrap and put it in a warm place for 90 minutes. For me, that means on top of the refrigerator. While that rises, I'm gonna get my filling and my frosting made. So if you don't have a stand mixer, this is the part where you would use a hand beater. I have a stand mixer though, so I'm gonna get that set back up and into that bowl, I'm gonna measure 110 grams of softened butter. I cut that up about 20 minutes ago before I started mixing, so that's good and soft. On top of that, we're gonna measure 150 grams of brown sugar, 20 grams of cinnamon, and one gram of salt. I'm gonna throw the paddle attachment on here and start to cream everything together. Again, we're gonna start on low speed for a minute or two and let things get moistened. Next, I'm gonna turn things up to medium high and continue to whip all this up for a, a while, like eight to 10 minutes. But don't walk away from your mixer while it's running on high speed. These things can buck themselves right off the counter and mess up your whole setup. So stick nearby. Yes, he thinks it's good. It's a good meme. I love this Leo meme. Okay, and after about 10 minutes, we fully cream the sugar and butter. If you're wondering, creaming is where we use sugar to whip air into butter. And you would normally do this for a cookie, but in the context of a cinnamon roll, we get a filling that's not gonna melt out the bottom as easily. If you don't do this step, you're basically gonna have an oily brown butter caramel on the bottom of your pan. And that sounds kind of good in theory, but in practice, ugh, barf. Cream your stuff bro. Now, I'm gonna scoop this out and set it aside for later. The air that we whipped in there should give us about two cups of total filling for our Cinnabons. Next, I'm gonna make the frosting for these real quick, and for that, I need to grab some cream cheese. Into the bowl of my stand mixer here, I'm gonna measure 115 grams of that. By the way, this was softened to room temperature because cold cream cheese doesn't really whip up. On top of that, I'm gonna measure 10 grams of vanilla extract, and then I'm gonna shake in about half of the powdered sugar that we need, or 70 grams. I'm also gonna zest, well, I'm gonna take off the sticker first, bro, then I'm gonna zest half of a medium lemon into the bowl, shake that in, and now we're gonna put the paddle on and hit this with medium speed until the sugar starts to get incorporated with the cheese. Once it looks like this, we're gonna shake in the rest of our powdered sugar, and then I'm gonna turn the mixer on to high speed. I'm gonna whip this up for about three minutes or so now until it's light and just starting to get whipped. I like my frosting for these Cinnabons kind of saucy, so I stop right here, but you can add more cream cheese and whip this harder for a longer amount of time to get something that's a little bit more like carrot cake frosting. Ooh, a little dollop on the deck. Now, I'm gonna pop a lid on this thing and set it aside until I'm ready to frost these buns. Speaking of those, before we shape them, we need to grab our vessel and 
butter it up. This is just a cheap eight by eight pan that I got at the grocery store and it works great for buns, rolls, Cinnabons, whatever you got. Once that's all heavily greased, just totally greased with butter from edge to edge. Now we're gonna grab the dough. At this point, it's roughly doubled in size or maybe it's like 75% larger. It does look gassy and buoyant and alive and when you poke it, you just wanna keep on poking it. Just touch it, touch it with the tips, yes. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna flip this out onto a lightly floured work surface and push it around a little bit so that it's in a rough rectangle shape. And there we go. I've got a little flour here on everything, including this rolling pin to make sure things aren't getting stuck to each other. Now, I'm gonna roll this out into a long, narrow sheet that's about one inch thick and the length of my cutting board, or about 18 inches total. I'm looking to make four huge, chunky Cinnabons here, and the long, narrow sheet rolled up is gonna end up giving us wide, flat Cinnabons instead of weird looking, small, baby, silly ones. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm gonna measure it real quick. It's about 18 inches by seven or eight inches wide. And now I'm gonna lay out that creamed brown sugar cinnamon mixture. I find that a dull knife is the best tool here. And there really isn't any art and science to this part. We're just looking for an even spread top to bottom to make sure we have the coverage we need of this brown sugar filling. Try and avoid having half inch thick pockets of this stuff. I know that we want a lot of it in there, but if we go excessively, it's gonna make things kind of heavy and greasy. And we want gooey, but if you're sitting on a half inch rolled up three or four times of this brown sugar thing you're going to it's going to be goo city dude too much goo okay before we roll this up now i'm just going to tidy the sides in a little bit get it all lined up and that looks good now it's just as simple as actually rolling this thing from the bottom to the top i like to try and roll it as tight as i can to keep contact between the filling and the dough layer so that we don't get a hollow dry canyon later on that has all the filling melted out of it once we've got it tubed up we're going to push it back into a squat little thing maybe about 10 inches long total like this and now we're going to grab a serrated knife and a little bit of water the water here on the knife is going to help that thing cut through all that sugar and butter without any stickage. Now we're gonna mark the halfway point and then split those in half so that we can get four even pieces. And then with gentle authority, we're gonna go in with our serrated knife and go all the way through the roll. The first cut here was a little messy. I'll admit that, but now I've got a wetter blade and I'm gonna slice the rest of these up carefully and then I'm gonna flip them on their ends so that they're facing down into the pan. I'm gonna lay these into my eight by eight butter dish now and give them a little smush to make them even flatter. Once they're all tucked in, we're gonna cover them with foil and let them slowly rise in the fridge overnight. If you're asking yourself, hey Bri, can I bake these right now? I'm ready to sin a roll soon. And yes, definitely go ahead and bake right now. That's no sweat. But I find that we get a better rise and a lot less of the sugar butter stuff runs out of the bottom when you firm it back in the fridge before baking. The next morning, we're ready to bake. I'm going to preheat my oven to 350 degrees. These rolls have not risen a bunch in the fridge, as you can see here. They've maybe grown 10%, so don't expect it to look like a fully proofed bun. I'm going to cover these with foil now, and we're going to give them a bake. But I do want to mention, you got to tent them a little bit. These rolls are going to rise a lot when we go to bake them and we want to give them some room to kind of puff up in there. Now, finally, we're going to load these into a 350 degree oven and bake them for 45 minutes covered. Oh my sweet Lord. These are looking super good. We're going to peel the foil off now and then we're going to return that pan to the oven and bake for another 15 to 20 minutes, depending on your oven. To get some actual variety of texture here, I like to bake mine pretty hard so that I can get some crunch on the outside to cut through what you know is going to be an absolutely insane amount of delicious gooey stuff going on on the inside. Speaking of that, these are rising up over the sides. There's some sugar burning in my oven. So make sure that you get a sheet tray under there if that happens to you. There we go. And after about an hour in the oven, wow. It's, wow is somehow actually an understatement here. We've got a fully enriched dough that we've baked hard on the outside and it's just a goo fest on the inside. We got well distributed but not broken cinnamon sugar everywhere. And all we have to do now is liberally frost this pan of buns while they're hot. The heat's gonna melt that frosting into the nooks and crannies a little bit and you're just gonna be so stoked. It smells like buttery cinnamony lemon zest in my house now and I'm ready. Let's eat this thing.